<coughs> Howdy everybody, uh, John Coffee here. I'm homesick today, so I'm watching some movies. Figured, uh, despite being sick, I'm going to try to do a couple reviews. <sighs> Get my mustache nice and straight here. <laughs> yeah, today I'm going to be reviewing a Blu-ray, and it's a Blu-ray of a movie that's been talked about you know, a hundred times, so there's no point really even discussing the movie, although I will give my opinion on the movie. And, uh, it, it seems to be a trend here lately with me watching Takashi Miike, whoop, that takes me out again a second, uh, Takashi Miike movies, um, I've said it a thousand times, and I think I'll say it a thousand more times, he is my favorite director of all time. Uh, I find to be I find his directing style and his 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 movies to be just the most entertaining things out there. Um, <coughs> and I'm sorry for being horse guys, but I'm not gonna have any time to do any videos any other way. So I'm just gonna try to hammer out a bunch of these today, despite being horse and sick. Uh, but the movie, of course, is probably his most famous flick. Second, maybe only to another one. I'll talk about that in a second too, because I don't wanna. I like build my hop for what I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's a. Uh, Ichi the Killer, which may be his, like I said, may be his most famous movie. Although, I mean, like, it's either this or Audition. Um, which are both actually on Blu-ray, which I, I, I own this, um, Audition, and Sukiyaki Western Django. And I know 13 Assassins is on Blu-ray. But of all of his, uh, his older stuff, I think that's the only three stuff on Blu-ray in America. I'm not 100% sure about that. If there's more, let me know, because I definitely want to pick up as much Mike on Blu-ray as possible. This is uh, put out by... Tokyo Shock, um, and uh, like I said, there's really no point in even talking about this movie because I, I, even people who don't watch a lot of Takashi and Miike stuff have at least seen this, so it's a movie that a lot of people have checked out. Um, basically, it's about a Yakuza gang, which is an Anho gang, which uh, their boss goes uh, missing, but actually, it's, it's not a spoiler, it happens the first five minutes of the movie, um, is killed by Ichi, um, and this guy right here which his name is Ki uh, buh, 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 buh. Kakahira. Kakahira. I may be completely wrong. I may have butchered that. I apologize if I did. Um, begins to hunt him down as soon as he finds out about Ichi. Who Ichi is this mentally disturbed young man who hates bullies. Who is being used by a man named Gigi. Which, uh, let me turn it off, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, GG to uh, kill the Yakuza gang for some, and you get a sense of revenge, but it never really gets into why. GG wants them all dead. Basically, it's a battle between Ichi the kill uh, Ichi and uh, Kakahara, and uh, there's also a subplot about a, a man named Kan Kanayeko. I think that's his name. Again, I could be butchering his name. If I am, I apologize. Um, and he he it's, uh, talk about it's about him and his son and. Uh, how he wants to uh, avenge the boss as well, because when he was down and out, uh, the boss gave him a job. So that's your basic plot. I mean, there's a lot more stuff going on in this movie than just that, but that's just a bare bones plot. And to talk about the movie just a little bit, I personally love, love, love this movie. I've loved it from the first time I watched it, but the first time I watched it, I guess I wasn't ready for a movie like this. You know, I hadn't watched a lot of Mike stuff, I hadn't watched a lot of Japanese films in general, and it really confused me. I didn't understand what the heck was going on. <laughs> But upon multiple viewings, and I watched this again last night, and especially last night, it's, it really came to the realization that this could be uh, Takashi and uh best work. Not my favorite of his work, but his best work in the sense of just like directing and getting performances out of actors and cinematography and you know stuff like that. This may be his finest work. I mean, it's a beautiful movie, man. Which is weird to say because it is nasty. This also may be his most brutal work, too. Like, you know, I know Visitor Q seems to be uh, the one that more people lean to. And it definitely is the more taboo film, I guess you could say, because there's a lot more uh, stuff in it. But um, I think but this, this film has been watered down by the mainstream. But when you really, like, look at it, there's rape, there's, you know, there's blood and jizz, there's uh, forced... Stringing guys up with chains, there's bondage, there's um, sadomasochism, there's needles, there's guys cutting tongues off. There's, you know, this is a very nasty movie. You know, it's pretty messed up for a film that garners a lot of mainstream respect. It's a nasty, nasty movie. And I say mainstream, but I guess uh, what I mean by that is like 
you'll see people talking like Attack of the Show talking about Ichi the Killer. You're not gonna see some of them talking about Fudo or the Dead or Alive movies or you know Happiness of Katakarissa. You know Ichi and Audition are the two films of his that really have kind of broken into the mainstream. But it's kind of surprising that this movie did because it's nasty. Like I said, it's got rape in it and it's got all this absolute insanity. You know, it's it's a it's a pretty jacked up movie. And, but it also has Mike's touch of humor, which, you know, almost every Mike film has a little bit of humor in it. Uh, I think if I ever had any complaint about this movie, oh, there's some bad CG in it. Which, you know, when you start watching Mike stuff, you learn to deal with minor flaws like that. Because outside the bad CG, this is a nearly perfect film, in my opinion. I mean, I just absolutely adore this movie. And when I, ha I saw the Blu-ray, I had to get it, despite the fact that uh, this wasn't cheap. I mean, I couldn't find it anywhere under 20 bucks. 20 bucks shipped, you know, like 17 bucks plus shipping. So I went ahead and nabbed it because I really wanted it, you know. I never had owned this movie. I'd only ever watched it like on Netflix and renting it and stuff like that. So I, I wanted the movie and I know I wanted it on Blu ray. But uh, I guess I can go ahead and like rate the movie. If I was going to give the movie, kind of Matt Review style here, <laughs> if I was going to give the movie a rating, it would definitely be four and a half. Only loses slightly because of some confusing stuff and some bad CG. Other than that, this movie is absolutely perfect. Now, moving on to the Blu-ray. <clears throat> now, I'm not 100% sure, because like I said, I never owned the DVD, but I think uh, all the special features and stuff are a direct port from the special edition, which I think was the Blood Pack edition. Uh, I don't think there's anything new on here. Um, which is not a problem for me, because I, I didn't own the other edition, so I didn't, I, I'm not double dipping on this. But um, Picture quality-wise... You know, I don't want to be mean, but Tokyo Shock, I mean, they've never been, like, oh, they're the criterion, <laughs> you know, they, they don't really, to me anyways, like, don't seem to put a lot of effort into their releases, you know, but I respect them wholeheartedly because they pick up some films that, you know, nobody would, like there's a movie called uh, Freeze Me, which is an awesome uh, Japanese exploitation film that, you know, no company would have picked up outside of Tokyo Shock. But uh, for such a high-profile movie, I, I was hoping they give it a a, a stunning transfer, and uh, you know, <laughs> it really looks like they just slapped a DVD transfer onto a Blu-ray disc. Is what it looks like to me. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but I'm not the greatest Blu-ray judger in the world. If you have this Blu-ray and you're completely disagree with me, let me know why. I'm down, you know. Uh, but to me, it just mm, it's a lot of grain. The colors just didn't pop. It was pretty flat. Um, but where this Blu-ray does shine is the special features. There's over two hours of special features, pretty much like this. There's a featurette with horror film director Eli Roth, which I haven't watched, but I don't know why it's even on here. Uh, photo gallery, original Ichi the Killer trailer, commentary with director Ichi, uh, director Kashi Mike, and manga artist, the guy who created Ichi the Killer, uh, Hideo Yamamoto. Uh, Tokyo Shock trailer gallery, memories of Ichi the Killer, the making of Ichi the Killer, which I did watch and is fantastic. It is awesome. It's probably about forty-five minute documentary about the making of each of the kill, and it is really good. Like they even go into like details of like on set watching Takashi um, actually uh, direct some of the scenes, which is really cool for a fan of Mike like myself. Um, there's also Takashi Mike film trailer reel, uh, extensive cast and crew interviews, featuring the cult of Ichi, featuring horror writer Jack Ketchum, fangirls Tony Tapone, and more. Uh, I haven't watched anything but the making of each of the killer, but I mean that's a lot of good special features. I mean it's a loaded disc, man. <coughs> but when it comes down to like what I recommend this, only to diehards who just absolutely want it on Blu-ray because they want it on Blu-ray, not because they want to upgrade the transfer or anything. Just because you're like I love this movie and I want it on every format possible, then yeah, I recommend this Blu-ray. But if you don't own the movie, and you're looking for an edition of it, and you're not too picky, I might recommend just getting the DVD. Like, check, make sure it has all the same special features first, but I might just recommend just getting the, the standard DVD other than getting Blu-ray, because it's a lot cheaper. You know. But for a mark like myself, who, if it's on Blu-ray, regardless of the transfer, I'm going to get it. You know. That's definitely, like, if you're a humongous Takashi Miike fan, and you don't give a piss what it looks like, you just want it on every format humanly possible, like myself, then yeah, pick up this. But if you already have the DVD, I just can't recommend upgrading 
because the transfer just isn't that good, you know. But overall, if you just want this Blu-ray like me, highly recommend picking it up just because of the movie. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm, that's what I want you to walk away from this review. If you've never seen Ichi the Killer, then you know that's what I recommend. Ichi the Killer. I recommend finding the movie any way possible and watching, Pre preferably a way that supports the Chigashi Miike, not downloading it illegally. But <laughs> just picking up on the DVDs or the Blu-ray or whatever you pick up and um, check it out, guys. So, like I said, probably most of the people on here have seen Ichi the Killer at least once because it's it's a very it became a very very popular movie when it first came out. Um, so that that's it, guys. Um, oh, one more thing, because I actually really like this cover quite a bit too. Even though I was always confused as a kid, I won't say as a kid, but. Right by the time this movie first came out, I remember going to the video store and seeing this cover and being like, oh, that looks awesome. By the time I wasn't allowed to rent it. But I always thought that was Ichi. But no, that's not Ichi. <laughs> um, but I, I still like that cover because that image from the film is so um, so iconic. You know. <coughs> but I hope you all could hear me through my gravelly voice. I'm sounding like Tom Waits today. Um, but thank you guys for watching and keep watching. And I'll keep doing reviews and We'll keep having fun, guys. So y'all take it easy, and I'll see y'all later.